Hi there, this video talks about a Excel spreadsheet for planning your website. This is a website optimization spreadsheet. It deals with both search engine optimization and user experience. It's certainly not a silver bullet or magic formula to high ranking websites, but it certainly helps if not for the user experience it's it's a better directory structure it uses what you call a virtual silo layout so let's take a look at a silo layout and you can see that we've got this color coded image here green represents the top level domain or home page and then you've got the first level second level and third level denoted by red orange and yellow in this example you can't actually see the the yellow because we didn't go that far but if we look at this you can see here we've got Ilkiston web design as the top level page and then below that you've got a sub page and below that sub pages and so on and so on that's what you call a silo and a silo is basically it's laid out almost like um you know a dissertation you know like when you write an academic essay or something like that you'd have a table of contents and then in each section you would have headings and subheadings and so on that's how the search engines work they like to be able to crawl a page and then find a page on that page and then another page on that page and you, it's basically about grouping your themes so if we go back to the other example that we were just looking at let's say you've got um, a website about fruit juice on the front page you might have links about the the different types of fruit so you might have apples oranges pineapples and so on and then on each page say on the apples page you might have a couple of links which point to pages one about apple juice and one about how to grow an apple tree and then on the apple tree page you might have uh, a landing page to a place where you can purchase apple seeds so that's a directory structure and that is how this spreadsheet has been laid out each row represents a page the top level page is green and then you've got red for the first level and you've got orange for the second level and then yellow denotes the third level that shows you how your website is structured it's recommended to use that structure if you can there's two types of silo physical silo and a virtual silo so this spreadsheet is really about design marketing development and strategy not necessarily in that order it helps to organize your content to optimize your content it's all for on page optimization where it does deal with search engine optimization it's set up in favor of the google search engine and it's meant to be that web designers graphic designers developers and copywriters can all refer to this spreadsheet so if you've got a team of people who are somewhat compartmentalized like not necessarily working in the same room this means that this spreadsheet can be passed between the team you can email a copy of this spreadsheet to each member of the team so everybody is on the same page when changes are made they can be saved and then updated it's about being able to have a team work together say for example you've got this page planning your website on that on planning your website we've got a picture of an ebook okay so let's say you've got a graphic designer who needs to come up with graphics well what they can do is refer to this page and they can look at what the keyword themes are they can see what the page title is at a glance they can see what the URL of the website is and so on and so on and they might be able to make better decisions about how they would make their graphics it's also worth pointing out that this spreadsheet doesn't use the meta keywords because Google no longer uses them let's just take a quick look at the meta keywords for this page yeah I mean they have been used okay you can see their meta meta name equals keywords but I know that Google doesn't actually use these an anymore they just ignore them so let's take a look at each column so you've got location which is the, f the first column here on the left and you can see that the home page that the top level page in the, the green row that is set to zero because that is the main page and then below that you've got 1.0 which represents the first level 
below that you've got 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1 1.5 that's the second level and then below that you've got 1.5.1 1.5.2 and so on and so on and it goes on the next column is page name and this is the name of each page not necessarily the page title but just the, the name of the page in this example the name of the page is also the anchor text and in this Excel spreadsheet I've actually frozen these two columns so when you scroll when you scroll left and right these two columns are sticky so you can always see what page you're actually on so if I scroll right to the end here you can still see that we're on that we've got the first row the green row highlighted which is the top level page so the next two <coughs> excuse me columns are keyword theme one and keyword theme two that's the primary keyword and the secondary keyword and these keywords act as running themes for each page and they dictate the occurrence of the keywords in the subsequent columns so you want the same running theme throughout each page not necessarily the exact same keywords all the time maybe variations of keywords perhaps if you're using the broad match feature in the Google AdWords keyword planner that can give you ideas for how you can vary your keywords on the subsequent on-page attributes like page title meta description alt text and so on and it's important to point out that we're not stuffing keywords we're actually erring on the side of caution if, any, if anything we don't like to go over the top that's not good and that won't stand up the future of search engine optimization is certainly not going to favor keyword stuffing so try to avoid doing that the next column is page title and as of June 2014 studies have shown that 55 characters is the ideal and maximum recommended length for titles titles are probably one of the most important on-page factors of your website and if we take a look at this page they provide a handy tool where you can preview what your titles look like in the search engine results so let me just grab this page title let's highlight that let's copy it and then paste and this gives you an idea of what it looks like in the search engines now if you were to go over the recommended character limit you'd find that this title is being cut off which means that the user when when somebody is browsing the search engine results pages they're not going to see your page title in its entirety so let's take an example of a long title which let's take this one for example because I know for a fact that this gets cut off not that that bothers me because it's this is this page is not necessarily targeting the search engines but you can see look how to add managers to your Google Plus but you can just about fit on the entire title but the Ilkeston web design bit gets cut off but you know that's fine because this page isn't necessarily meant to rank and search and this page is really for the user Google can understand it I mean there's there's no there, there's no loss of search engine optimization value Google can still read the entire entire title even if it gets cut off so the next column is like I said title tag length 58 max is roughly the the recommended length obviously if you're using capital letters in your page title that takes up more space you can see that some of these do in fact go way over 58 characters some of these are 79 and what have you it doesn't matter I mean that's not something that bothers me it, like I say these pages are not necessarily meant for search engines they're meant for the user your strategy shouldn't necessarily be to rank every single page in the search engines it should be to rank a few key pages and then when people land on those pages they find their way to these other pages the next column is 301 redirects so if for example you've set up a 301 redirect which forwards to a longer URL 
it's handy to make a note of that here because you might need to add some canonicalization to these URLs or you might want to de-index these from search altogether. So for example this short URL forwards to this slightly longer URL. Then we've got the page URL so typically you would use a keyword rich URL separated by hyphens the next column is whether or not each page is indexed by default they're all indexed but in some cases we might manually remove them from search because we might not want certain pages to rank the reason for that being if you've got um, uh, a landing page with not much on it it might be a little bit devoid of content in which case Google would look upon that as a low quality uh, page and to have that indexed mm, that could have a negative effect on the rest of the site any low quality pages which are rather thin on content you can manually de-index them and then just put no here so you know that that is not going to show up in search and that it is only for people to land on on the website next we've got the meta description column and this also has uh, a recommended length of 100, 160 characters so the meta descriptions are in there and they I think they all come under one I mean there's one there that's 387 so clearly that needs to change and that's that's the great thing about the spreadsheet it, it can show you where you need to improve things and what work uh, needs to be done on the website also if um, the meta descriptions are too short that could have a negative effect so you always want to try and aim for about 160 characters in length for your meta descriptions then we've got the h1 tags because of the way wordpress is set up we've actually got two h1 tags but generally speaking you're best off having uh, just one h1 tag then we've got h2 h3 and so on then you've got image file names image alt so for each image that we've got on each page we'll have image one file name so we know what the file name is and then the alt text that's the alternative text attribute that you can add to each image so that's pretty much it. I mean, you can get an idea of what this is all about. It's a work in progress. When something on the website changes, the changes also need to occur on this spreadsheet. It allows you to do an audit of your website. It just gives you that bird's eye view of what's going on on each page.